Hey there Cosmic Warriors and welcome back to another video. Okay so I'm here today with another interesting exciting video because I'm going to be talking about how to read your composite chart with your significant other or with your friend or with your child whatever the relationship I'm going to be diving into composite charts. I hope you find this video to be helpful. So on that note, let's do this. Okay, so first and foremost, let's go over a quick tutorial on how to find your composite chart. So I'm gonna be using astro.com for the purpose of this video. And so full credit goes to astro.com for their chart generators. So if you know your birth information and you know your partner or your friends, etc., if you know their information, type that all in. You're going to need the time of birth, the place of birth, the date of birth, all that good stuff. Once you've done that, select your name and then go to extended chart selection. Once there, remember to choose your preferred our system, I personally prefer to use whole signs, but of course you can use whatever house system you prefer. Then above where it says chart type, select composite chart midpoint method. Now there is also the Davison chart option, but I will be using the composite chart today. I personally like to use composite charts, but that is my preference. Also, you can get a progressed composite chart between you and your partner, as you can see from this option that I'm showing you. So this shows how your relationship together progresses over time, which I think is pretty good. Anyway, after selecting your composite chart choice, choose your partner's or your friend's name above and then go to click here to show chart. And voila, this is the birth of your relationship. So in a nutshell, the composite chart illustrates the unique relationship that you have between you and your partner, okay? It will show you the path of your relationship and the main themes that exist within your relationship. Now, at the same time, make sure that you are looking at your synastry in combination with your composite chart. I did make a video explaining how to read your synastry chart. Um, and so what I'll do is I will link that down below or I will show it somewhere. But basically, consider the synastry and also consider your individual birth charts. All of these things must be taken into consideration when it comes to compatibility within astrology. But to clarify the difference between your synastry chart and your composite chart, the synastry will show how you and your partner are impacting one another, okay? It's that sort of back and forth process. Whilst the composite chart will show you how you come together as a team, as a unit, and as a force. Now, for this video, my name is Moonlight and my partner's name is Sunshine. So Sunshine is a he and I am a she. And when we come together as a couple, this is the unique relationship we share. As you can see from this chart, we have a Capricorn rising, a Cancer sun and a Libra moon. Some would say this chart shows that Sunshine and myself, we were made for each other. <laughs> but this is only at a first glance, okay? So with that in mind, let's look at the bigger picture. So notice how there are oppositions between Capricorn on this side and Cancer slash Gemini on the other side. Also notice how Libra is joining in creating a T-square. Now T-squares they can point towards tension and struggle but they can also point towards resolution and repair. 
And so when looking at the composite chart, perhaps my partner and I, we will experience tensions in love when it comes to cooperation, when it comes to fairness. Maybe we feel tension over who feels sane or maybe our ego gets in the way as we push to be right. Or perhaps that lighthearted feel within our relationship it can be dampened by negativity or by too much discipline and structure and rigidness. Sure, there is commitment, but there is also a desire for changing, th changing things up and for being carefree from time to time. And if we look at our Venus signs individually, I'll pull up our charts individually and show them on screen. Well, I have Venus in Virgo, so naturally I am more practical minded when it comes to love, whilst Sunshine, he has Venus in Aries, and so he is more daring and adventurous. I'm more realistic about the relationship, and he is more spontaneous. I seek a relationship where there is a gentle sensual touch, and Sunshine seeks a relationship where there is great physical desire and action. I might consider Sunshine to be very bold and direct, and he might consider me to be slightly more meek and reserved. Still, when we come together, we create this Venus in Gemini energy where we are playful and funny and witty. We can joke around and make each other laugh, we are communicative with each other, but that Venus energy is also in the sixth house. And so there just might be a lot of talking about the day to day. What needs to be done? What needs attending to? Perhaps work is on both of our minds, but we are also open to being flexible with each other. Now, on the other hand, Venus is opposite Mercury and the Ascendant and Mars in Capricorn. And so our wires can get crossed due to the sameness of things, due to those boring routines and mundane ways of living. Then again, another possibility is that it takes us a while to feel comfortable with each other. It takes a while for us to open up to one another and to get close. Perhaps me more so than sunshine because I have a Capricorn rising and he has a Sagittarius rising. Maybe he can push me out of my comfort zone. Um, and not to mention, he does have that moon in Cancer energy in my seventh house, which I explained in the Sinistry video. Um, and so I may feel more at ease or I may feel like I can open up to him a lot better. Not to mention I have that Sagittarius moon in the 12th house and so I'm perhaps not as out there as other Sagittarius moon folks. Maybe I prefer my time in solitude or I'm okay doing my own thing behind the scenes. Perhaps I like to study and further my knowledge whenever, whenever I am alone. I like to get creative and perhaps I'm highly imaginative. But perhaps with the help of Sunshine, he brings out my free spirited inner world. Like keeping in mind that in Sinistry, his Sagittarius rising sits in my 12th house. Therefore, he is activating my Sagittarius moon. But again, bringing it back to the composite chart, perhaps our relationship, it takes some time to ease into. But with maturity and time and trust and respect, we grow fonder and fonder. Remember that Capricorn energy is about maturity and the more you persevere, the better the rewards. It's a long lasting energy, it's a sustainable energy, and so therefore perhaps this relationship is long lasting. Provided, of course, that both parties have the ability to try new things. So I hope from this very long example, you can see how this can work, how you can read composite charts yourself. I know it's a lot of information because you got to consider the composite chart along with the synastry and then the needle charts as well. But composite charts are super interesting because you can get some 
insight into major themes. Okay, so with the bigger picture out of the way, let's address what your planets and angular placements mean when it comes to composite charts. So we're going to be looking at things through the lens of romantic relationships. So if you're looking at a friendship or a business partnership, things will play out differently. So just keep that in mind. Firstly, then let's look at the sun. So the composite sun signifies the identity of your relationship. It shows what is at the heart of your relationship. What is at the center? What keeps you together? The love that you share, it signifies what is shown outwardly, what others see visibly. So for example, if you and your partner's composite sun is in Taurus, Qualities that are shown include support, dependability, and loyalty. At the heart of your relationship, you feel comfortable, you feel calm together. What others see is the practical side of your relationship. And at the center, you are sensual and you seek pleasure with each other. And then moving on to the moon, the composite moon signifies the emotions that run through your relationship. It highlights your emotional needs as a couple, as well as how you feel when you are together. It represents what is felt internally rather than what is shown outwardly. The things others don't see. Also, the moon, the composite moon, shows the private life that you that you share. So for example, if you and your partner's composite moon is in Sagittarius, you may feel free and uplifted when you are together. You may feel adventurous and you might be willing to travel together. And your private life consists of indulging or preaching. Then moving on to Mercury, well, the composite Mercury signifies the way your mind works as a couple. So when your minds come together um, and also the ways in which you exchange ideas, what conclusions do you arrive to? So looking at how you make decisions as a team, as a unit. Moreover, the composite Mercury represents the things you learn about as a couple. So for example, if you and your partner's composite Mercury is in Gemini, you may both bounce off each other quite quickly and you may both prefer to make decisions logically within the relationship. Now, you might also gossip and talk over one another, but you still show curiosity towards what the other person is saying. And as a couple, you may enjoy learning about a ton of different things. In this respect, you're pretty versatile. Then moving on to Venus. So the composite Venus signifies the harmony you feel within the relationship, how at ease you feel when you are together, when you're with each other. Also, the composite Venus can look at how you address conflict. So looking at how you can reach some type of resolve within the relationship, how you can reach um, a compromise. Likewise, um, the composite Venus can signify the types of pleasures that you seek out as a couple or how you handle money as a couple. It also shows your basic values that you share together as well as the likelihood of marriage. So for example, if you and your partner's composite Venus is in Pisces, you will make many sacrifices within your relationship or within your marriage if you're married, or you may remain hopeful that marriage will happen one day, but you won't force things. You will allow things to unfold naturally. Also, you may seek out pleasures that include things like film, music, and seaside trips. And you may be highly compassionate with each other when it comes to finances and materials. And even though you can both be fearful when it comes to materials, you still seek to feel at peace. Perhaps serenity is something that you value within your relationship. And so you seek to feel serenity when you are with each other. Though on the other hand, when it comes to compromise, compromise may be a bit of a tricky thing due to lack of boundaries. So that is something to 
consider. Okay, so moving on to Mars, the composite Mars signifies the type of conflict you face as a couple. So looking at disagreements and arguments that you may have. Also, the composite Mars signifies how driven you are as a couple, how you assert yourselves when you're together, the type of goals you share and how you pursue your goals. So for example, if you and your partner's composite Mars is in Scorpio, to put it lightly, handling conflict does not come easy, okay? Because as a couple, you may be very explosive or you may be resentful towards one another. Yeah, basically when you argue, when you disagree, you can both be very sensitive to each other, towards each other. And you may also try to control the situation. You may even face conflict surrounding shared resources or surrounding jealousy or possessiveness. And as a couple, you are highly driven, so driven you may clash due to both parties wanting to dominate. And some goals you share may include business, sex, and desire. So Jupiter, the composite Jupiter signifies the type of growth you perform as a team, as well as the opportunities you experience as a couple. So looking at doing things outside of your comfort zone together or broadening your horizons, also looking at the types of adventures that you go on. Likewise, the composite Jupiter signifies the happiness you seek when you are together, how you experience benevolence and generosity. Also, do you and your partner experience luck? And what do you want more of within your relationship? So for example, if you and your partner's composite Jupiter is in Leo, you and your partner may be adventurous romantically. You love going on dates and you love all the experiences that love has to offer. You are super expressive and generous towards each other. Also, you might experience luck if you wish to have children together, or you might feel lucky to have a partner who is affectionate and warm. In the relationship, you may both seek more fun, play, and spontaneity. So moving on to Saturn, the composite Saturn signifies how you and your partner overcome obstacles and hardships as a team. Also, how you build as a team and how you set boundaries. Likewise, it signifies the limitations and delays you experience, how you'll have to wait, but as you are both waiting, it can feel like your patience is being tested. So for example, if you and your partner's composite Saturn is in Cancer, there may be delays when it comes to having a family or when it comes to emotional closeness. You may both have to overcome obstacles that involve home, security, moods, or emotional eating. Building as a team uh, requires an ability to empathize with each other's needs. And you may set boundaries when it comes to depending too much on one another. You may also experience fluctuating hardships, which can test your relationship. And then Uranus, the composite Uranus, signifies how you and your partner come together in a unique way and how you look towards the future together. It will show you the hopes and wishes and aims that you share as a couple. Plus, the composite Uranus will show how you do things differently in comparison to the rest of society. So, how you think outside the box when you are with each other. Also, how are you like-minded? So for example, if you and your partner's composite Uranus is in Aquarius, you might have a pretty progressive relationship. You might not even want to get married at all. Perhaps neither of you believe in marriage or you might be open to the idea of having an open relationship. Then again, perhaps you are committed to only each other, but you want to experiment. You can be pretty inventive as a couple in this respect. Perhaps you share similar aims when it comes to the future and you are like-minded in this regard as well. Maybe you both give each other plenty of space or you're open to having a long distance relationship even, or maybe as a couple, neither of you care about what other couples do. You don't really step into that comparison game. 
Looking at Neptune then, so the composite Neptune signifies the level of sacrifice within your relationship. It represents how you merge and come together as one force, as one entity. It also shows the spiritual connection you share as a couple as well as the dreams you share. Also looking at the things that you fantasize about but at the same time the composite Neptune can represent how you find it challenging to separate yourselves. So looking at dependency, for example, it can also showcase common fears that you have. So for example, if you and your partner's composite Neptune is in Capricorn, you might come together as one force when it comes to your ambitions and long-term goals, okay? And I mean this, listen, you're really, really merging together here. As a team, you might persevere, okay? You may really be very much dependent on each other in this respect, you know, to push and to achieve, or you might lose yourselves in each other's goals, etc. One might give up their goals and dreams for the other. Another possibility is that you don't think you share a spiritual connection with each other, with Neptune being in Capricorn, or maybe your dreams are just, they're much more on the realistic side, okay? You might get caught up in each other's fears and each other's worries greatly as well. So that's something to keep in mind. And you might both fantasize about moving mountains together as if you want to become this, this par house couple. And then moving on to Pluto, well, the composite Pluto signifies the type of major transformations you go through as a couple what huge transitions you experience together. It represents the type of intimacy and intensity you share, how you explore the taboo as a couple. It shows how you combine your resources as well. So for example, if you and your partner's composite Pluto is in Scorpio, some transformations you go through as a couple include loss, such as one or both of you losing a family member, also sexual blockages, um, such as one or both of you supporting each other through a sexual blockage or a sexual issue. Then again, perhaps you challenge one another to look into your shadow selves. Such a process may make or break your relationship. Perhaps you share um, intimate moments and the emotions you feel for one another are very, very intense. Then again, perhaps one or both of you try to control the finances that you share. Then moving on to Chiron, well, the composite Chiron signifies the type of healing and mending that is performed within your relationship. But at the same time, it can represent the type of insecurities that exists within your relationship as well. So for example, if you and your partner's composite Chiron is in Virgo, Perhaps you both feel insecure about correctness, about improvement, or about purity. Perhaps there is a need to do everything systematically, but this adds pressure on one another. This adds pressure to the relationship. Or maybe one or both of you struggle with health implications, or you struggle with an eating issue or with a fitness issue. But then on the other hand, maybe you are both very attentive to each other's worries and inner critics. And then looking at the asteroid Juno, so the composite Juno signifies the type of marriage you will have. That is if you decide to marry. Now on that note, it might actually show if you even end up marrying in the first place, or if you do marry, will you divorce? But with marriage to one side here, the composite Juno can show the level of devotion and commitment you have to one another. So for example, if you and your partner's composite Juno is an Aries, perhaps your marriage is full of passion and excitement and energy and taking risks. As a couple, you are searching for new exciting things to do together. There is that desire to try new sexual things. Then again, perhaps it can point towards the decision not to marry because you both prefer to be independent of all the rules and laws that come with such commitment. You know you are devoted to one another, but you don't need a piece of paper to prove it. Okay, so moving on to the angular placements and the angular houses. So these are your AC slash first house, uh, DC slash seventh house, IC slash fourth house, and MC slash tenth house. 
So the composite AC, well, rising sign, the composite first house can represent the type of image you project outwardly as a couple. So what is the outward appearance of your relationship? Likewise, it shows the type of life path that you embark on together, as well as how you automatically behave when you're with each other. So for example, if you and your partner's composite AC slash first house is in Libra, perhaps you project a social and interactive image as a couple. You are courteous towards one another and you consider how the other person is doing when you're together. You may both be stylish and well-dressed when you go out, or you might be charming and observant towards one another. The type of life path you embark on may very well include marriage or a long-lasting relationship, and you may automatically behave as a team. Now, the composite DC, or the descendant or the composite seventh house, can represent the side of your relationship that nobody really sees. Perhaps only those you know very well can see this side or those who are closest to you, they know this side. Furthermore, the DC slash the seventh house can show how you both interact when others are involved. So when you go to an event or a party as a couple, for example, how do you get on when you're socializing with other people? So for example, if you and your partners composite DC slash seventh house is in Aries. So looking at the opposite of that Libra rising, uh, that Libra first house energy. Maybe others don't see the fights that you have or the arguments that you have. Perhaps only those closest to you know of these things or maybe others don't know much about your sex life. You both prefer to keep this part of your lives private. And when you socialize as a couple, perhaps you bring out your separate opinions or you're happy enough to do separate things, you know, sort of have your own individuality within that space or you give each other freedom to just, yeah, to mingle and to do your own thing. Then moving on to the composite IC slash fourth house, well, this can represent the type of home and living situation that you set up as a couple. Likewise, it can show the type of family that you have together, if you choose to have a family, that is, or if you can have a family. Also, it can show the core of your emotional security as a couple. How emotionally connected do you feel as a couple? So for example, if you and your partner's composite IC slash fourth house is in Gemini, maybe you change homes throughout your relationship. You move to a different neighborhood. Perhaps you have two or more children together, or maybe your living situation is ever changing within the home. You're always changing the layout or you're redecorating and so on. And at the core of your emotional security, you communicate with one another. Communication pulls you closer together and makes you feel secure. Then again, perhaps there are times when you are super logical, which can lead to misunderstandings. And then moving on to the composite MC slash 10th house. Well, this can represent the type of ambitions you share as a couple what your long-term goals are, what you want to accomplish within the relationship. Likewise, it can show the type of reputation that you build together. So for example, if you and your partner's composite MC slash 10th house is in Sagittarius, so looking at the opposite there of the Gemini IC, maybe your ambitions include long distance travel and exploring new places and doing all of these new exciting things together. Or maybe you both want to educate yourselves further about the world. You may possibly move country altogether, or you may move really far away from your hometown, or you may live abroad for a, a period of time throughout your relationship. And as a couple, you may build upon a reputation that shows your desire for freedom or for popularity, or possibly even your desire for fame. Maybe the public can see how lucky you are to be in such a benevolent relationship. Okay, so with the angular 
placements and the angular houses being dis discussed, let's now look at the rest of the houses in the composite chart. Keeping in mind that planets in the houses will change things, so will aspects respectfully, and make sure that you locate the ruling planets of your houses for more information. Not to mention, make sure you are considering your birth charts, um, the birth charts that you both have individually, and then consider synastry. But I will give some basic examples as I go throughout these houses, just like I did with the other placements discussed. The second house in the composite chart then can represent how you approach your personal finances as a couple, as well as how you approach security and stability, the security and stability within your relationship. So how secure do you feel as a couple? Also, how do you approach your personal talents and skills? So for example, if you and your partner's composite second house is in Scorpio, you might approach personal finances in a fearful or domineering way or in a compassionate and sensitive way. You might be driven, yes, but you also might be suspicious. There may also be secrets when it comes to finances. That is a possibility. Then again, it could be that as a couple, you go through transformations when it comes to your finances and when it comes to your physical security. You might relocate or you might have to build from the ground up after losing a large sum of money. Now, your inner security within the relationship can feel shaky. There may be times when the relationship is close to ending or there's fears over it ending even, but perhaps you push through these challenges by looking at your shadow selves. You might go through intense endings followed by huge awakening new beginnings. Now, the third house, in the composite chart will represent how you approach your immediate environment slash local area as a couple, as well as how you approach daily interaction. So how do you interact when it comes to general com communication? Also, how do you approach vehicles? So for example, if you and your partner's composite third house is in Capricorn, you might approach your immediate environment in a cautious and reserved way, Perhaps you aren't the most chatty couple when interacting with others on a daily basis. Maybe you aren't over, overly fond of having generalized conversations if you think they are pointless or if they are unnecessary to you. Or maybe you just get to the point <laughs> pretty quickly. And when it comes to vehicles, well, perhaps having a vehicle comes later on in life. Or you might decide to purchase vehicles that are older or that are second hand. Now the fifth house in the composite chart can represent how you approach your love life slash dating life. So looking at the dating stages of your relationship or looking at how you keep the romance alive within your relationship. Also, it looks at how you approach children as well as how you approach things like play, fun, enjoyment and entertainment. So for example, if you and your partner's composite fifth house is in cancer, you might prefer cozying up on the sofa as a form of enjoyment, or you might um, make going on dates a priority because by doing so, you feel emotionally connected. Having children may be a strong desire of yours and having children is likely with cancer here as well. Also, being affectionate with each other is a way you show love. Now, the sixth house in the composite chart can represent how you approach your day-to-day -day tasks and responsibilities, how you approach your daily working schedules and how you approach the mundane and routines. Likewise, the uh, sixth house can represent um, how you show concern toward, towards each other's health and well-being. So for example, if you and your partner's composite sixth house is in Taurus, you might be practical and consistent when it comes to your day-to-day -day responsibilities. You might ease into the daily grind or view it as essential 
And if you are to live a stable and content life together, perhaps it's important to you both that you are working, that you're being productive. Um, and there's also a desire to create tangible results. So to focus on the finances coming in and the materials being gathered. Making time for sensuality and pleasure may be a priority and you may comfort one another when you're feeling pearly. Moving on to the eighth house. So the eighth house in the composite chart can represent how you approach intimacy, vulnerabilities and loss, as well as how you approach the joint accounts and joint finances. Likewise, how do you approach your sexual desires and emotional difficulties? So for example, if you and your partner's composite eighth house is in Leo, you might be super romantic with one another. When you feel close, you are bold, you are generous, you may be expressive when it comes to intimacy, and you may show how proud you are of one another when you can open up and be vulnerable. If or when a loss occurs within the relationship, you remain strong for each other. Also, you might be super sexual together. And when it comes to joint finances, perhaps you each like to have an individual account or an individual opinion. Now, the ninth house in the composite chart can represent how you approach travel and exploration, how you approach your beliefs and morals, how you approach things like growth and furthering yourselves. Likewise, this house can represent your higher calling, your higher meaning as a couple. So for example, if you and your partner's composite ninth house is in Aquarius, you might continuously evolve and change as a couple because your beliefs are always changing. Perhaps you live abroad together or you go and you volunteer in another, in another country or maybe you decide to go to university as a team, you take up a course together, sounds far-fetched, but it's possible. Then again, maybe you feel your higher meaning as a couple is to create a difference within the world. You might do something that is enterprising. And then moving on to the 11th house. Well, the 11th house in the composite chart can represent how you approach your future aims and goals how you approach your hopes and wishes for the future. Also, what type of group or crowd do you become a part of? So looking at alliances and teams that are built, plus looking at how you approach your community or what type of community uh, you both wish to be a part of. Furthermore, this house can represent your common interests. So for example, if you and your partner's composite 11th house is in Pisces, you might share common interests of film, music, dance, or water life. You might become a part of a group that is religious or spiritual or become a part of a community that is religious or spiritual. Or you might build on alliances where people are compassionate and caring and sensitive. Then again, uh, you might fall into a crowd of people who love to party and drink and escape their problems. Likewise, you may be wishy-washy about your hopes and wishes for the future. There is no clear direction or path there, but you both also trust that things will work out. And then lastly, looking at the 12th house. So the 12th house in the composite chart can represent how you approach spirituality and other worldly things as a couple, how you approach things like relaxing and retreating from the outside world, how you renew your energy behind the scenes. Furthermore, this house can represent substances and addictions. So how do you approach these things as a couple? Likewise, what are the unconscious themes going on beneath the surface within your relationship? What is being hidden? So for example, um, if you and your partner's composite 12th house is in Virgo, you might make more time for spiritual practices or you might work through things like overthinking and nervousness as a couple. This can be revitalizing and healing for your relationship. Worry may be hidden from clear sight. Relaxing may be challenging at times because of all the busyness of your everyday lives. And so perhaps some effort is required on both of your parts. 
then again, uh, you may critique things as a couple as a form of renewal and relaxation. And when it comes to substances, you may both be health conscious, so you may not go overboard on the alcohol, for example. Okay then, Cosmic Warriors, so that concludes my video all about how to read composite charts. We were looking at all things composite today. And on that note, you know, I really do hope that this video made sense. Please let me know if you could follow along or if you got something out of this video. I just really hope that uh, you find it to be helpful. <laughs> But as always, please let me know what you thought of the video in the comment sections down below. I would love to know your thoughts and your opinions. But with all that being said, thank you so much for watching. Thank you for subscribing. And of course, if you would like to see more videos from myself and you have not yet subscribed, then please click that subscribe button and give this video a like if you did like it today. And I will be back with another video very, very soon. Bye.